today's video, I'm going to be showing you a 4D Etch-A-Sketch. So the two little knobs on the bottom do twist and spin. They don't unfortunately adjust the image on the Etch-A-Sketch screen, but it is thermal, so it comes and it goes and it disappears, and then all of a sudden it's there again, depending on temperature. So it does have that same it's here and it's gone effect. I really like it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. I'm going to begin with an overlay of black acrylic because I want this to be a chrome nail. You do need to have a black base and usually I would just sculpt a clear acrylic base, paint it with some black gel polish and do it that way. But for some reason I felt like giving myself a challenge and to me black acrylic overlays are a major challenge just because they clog your brush and so you have to be really diligent about cleaning it. After I do have that black overlay on the entire nail, I'm going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that it is nice and strong. Anytime you have a super pigmented color of acrylic, they just don't tend to be nearly as strong as just a, a nice clear so something like darker colors blacks lots of glitter all weaken your acrylic so an acryl a clear acrylic overlay is just a really good way to ensure that your nail is going to be nice and strong i'm going to file the nail into shape with my e-file making sure it's nice and smoothed out finished off on all of the edges and then once that's done i'm going to be applying a layer of a chrome base otherwise you can use a no wipe gel top coat and then I'm going to start rubbing in my um, just straight regular mirror chrome powder that is silver back to like the classics I haven't used just silver chrome powder in so long I've been using you know duo chromes and different colored chromes and stuff but just a silver chrome is fun I haven't done one in a very long time and then I'm going to apply a layer of gel sealer over the top of this gel sealer is a little harder than gel top coat it's harder to find too it's more difficult to just locate that bottle is a really old one but it does do really well over the top of chrome because it gives it a little bit extra protection. And then I'm going to take a nail form backing and I'm going to start sculpting the base of my Etch-A-Sketch. And you can make your Etch-A-Sketch as big or as small as you want. It kind of depends on, you know, how much you want it to hang off over the sides of the nail, how much space you want to be able to construct your doodle on the screen. So just make it whatever size seems like it would just be appropriate for kind of your end goal. And it's got, it's a nice rectangle and it has very rounded edges. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. So just sculpt a thin rectangle with those rounded curved edges with the with a red acrylic and then with a silver, like a metallic silver acrylic, you're going to sculpt your screen. It doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, mine went over the edges. It's a little messy. That is just fine. Then you're going to add the frame around the screen. This is where you have to be a little bit more, a little more careful just to kind of get all the edges nice and smooth and try not to get too much of the red on top of the silver. The silver over the red didn't matter so much since we were doing another layer of red, but you don't want to cover up that nice silver screen with any of the red. And red is one that does tend to stain, so as you're sculpting this frame, do so with caution, making sure that you're just kind of going slowly and taking your time. If you do touch up any of the lines as they go over the silver, make sure your brush is very clean. Dip it in monomer, wipe it, dip it in monomer again, and wipe it before you go and try to clean up the silver. Do It, it doesn't have to be super long. You don't have to like really clean your brush, but make sure that as you wipe it the second time after dipping it in monomer there's no red pigment left go through and make sure it's got the frame going all the way around after you do have that frame completely covering your your little etch-a-sketch you may find that some of the edges are a little uneven the only line you really need to make sure is looking very nice right now is the inside line around the silver as long as that looks good the rest of it can be filed so now we're going to take an e-file and I'm going to straighten up the, the far edges, the sides of it, just to make sure that they are nice and crisp. Even though I had a vague rectangle with the curved sides, the sides themselves or the curved corners, the sides weren't very straight. So that's the first thing I'm going to try to straighten out a little bit. Then I'm going to file the top of the frame just to make sure that that's a little bit smoother because it was a really lumpy. Like I said, the only thing I was worried about was that inner rectangle. Everything else was kind of, you know, last last of the last of the list so we're just going to clean all that up smooth out those edges again and then i'm going to take a narrow bit on my e-file and just basically drill two holes in the bottom corners of the etch-a-sketch frame make sure they go all the way through now i'm going to take and on a very tiny straw this is the smallest straw in my little collection of acrylic working straws i'm going to sculpt little little white cylinders around my straw this is for the base of the buttons or not buttons but the the turning dials that you adjust the edge sketch the little picture with so we're going to be using those two as just kind of like the starting starting point of those after they have completely cured you can slide them off of the straw and you have two pretty nice little cylinders then you're going to file the edges of them because they aren't straight and you want to make them not nearly as tall as they were and you're just going to kind of get yourself two circles this is 
a really fun, really easy way that I found to make these two dials compared to ways that I've done things like this in the past. I was really happy with the way this turned out. Then I'm going to have two circles on my nail form backing. I'm just going to kind of pat them out. These are not cylinders, just circles. Then set your cylinders on top of your circles and poke a hole in the middle. So the hole in the middle of the circle is just big enough for this wire to go through. Then you're going to put a head pin through the etch-a-sketch so that the head is on the bottom and you're going to secure it so it doesn't kind of fall out or anything or move around with some poster putty. Repeat for the other hole, secure that. So you've got two pins that are going to be sticking straight up through the etch-a-sketch. After you have those two pins and they're straight and they're in place, cut off most of the extra wire. So you have just a little nub. That's why you have to have them really kind of stuck down and secured with the poster putty in the back. So you have those two head pins, a little bit of extra stuff sticking out, and then you're going to put that little nub of extra wire through the holes in the bottoms of the circles so that the circle is towards the Etch-a-Sketch and that the opening is up on the Etch-a-Sketch. That way you have a little bit of exposed wire. Then you're going to take a pretty stiff bead of white acrylic so that it doesn't run through the little cracks around the wire in the hole in the bottom of the dials, and you're going to fill them in. And as long as your acrylic isn't too thin where it seeps through, the system worked so well. It was so quick. It was so easy. And it was so snug. Usually when you make these dials or anything like this with wire and it goes through, they're pretty loose. These I found to be just the right amount of, of tight. You know, they still spun just like they're supposed to, but they didn't, they didn't wiggle or flop around too much. And then you can secure your Etch-a-Sketch to the nail. The only thing you have to be careful of is to make sure that the ends of those head pins do not get um, acrylic on them. You want to make sure that they stay where they can turn and spin but as long as that's the case that's that's it as far as like the acrylic mechanisms go and then you have the enjoyment of getting to decorate your etch-a-sketch so the writing on the etch-a-sketch is going to be done with a gold paint so you're going to take either gold gel paint or i'm using gold acrylic paint and you're going to write etch-a-sketch across the top of the frame so this is going to be the area opposite those two little dials and in the video it doesn't show up nearly as well as it does in person especially in this particular lighting and then above the dials you have to paint the arrows for which direction each dial controls left and right or up and down and that is you know that's that's it for the gold and then we're going to take some white and just make a little bit of a texture line around the outside of each of the dials basically just a little dashed line kind of showing you that they would have a little bit of a feeling now I'm going to be mixing some gel top coat with some black thermal powder. So if you have a black thermal paint that just goes black to clear, you can use that too. I don't have one, so I'm going to be making my own. You want to kind of create a balance between thin enough where it can still be painted easily, where you can still make the little lines, but thick enough where you have a nice, you know, vivid black line. Once you have that done, you can make your little you know, whatever your Etch-a-Sketch has on it at the moment. So the things to keep in mind when you're painting the Etch-a-Sketch little doodle is that the line has to be continuous. So it has to be something that you could make non-stop. So there has to be little connecting lines between all of the pieces. So make sure that you don't forget to add those. I know whenever I did stuff with an Etch-a-Sketch and I wanted thicker lines, I would just go back and forth and make them bolder go over the same area multiple times so I was fine with having some of the lines be a little thinner as far as like the extra lines than the other ones but otherwise that's it it is thermal so when your etch-a-sketch is warm the little picture is gone and then when it cools off it'll be there again you could write something like I love nails or I always like to practice signing my name on an etch-a-sketch or do some kind of masterpieces some of the things people have done are incredible so you could really have fun with the picture on your etch-a-sketch I hope you guys like it and I will see you all next time bye